Across the Obelisk is a title that I've been staring at from across the pond like The Great Gatsby. It's a deck building roguelike adventure game you can play with up to four players, and the madness that ensues when dealing with things like this, this, and this is some of the most fun I've had in ages. They actually just released their new DLC, The Sands of Ulmanim, and Paradox reached out asking if I wanted to try it for a video. But one thing that Paradox didn't know is that I'm a roguelike goat. I beat the three most popular roguelikes in a row in under an hour, so I don't mess around. If Michael Jordan decided to play roguelikes instead of basketball, and also decided to be somewhat mediocre at it, that would be me. So today, I'm going to put my roguelike skills to the test. The rules are simple. I have to beat the Pyramid of Ulmanim before suffering three casualties. If I'm able to do this challenge, I'll be able to walk away with my chin and roguelike street cred held high. But if I fail, I'll be the laughing stock of the entire desert. Probably just like one guy laughing out there, but it still hurts. So come with me as I explore one of my new favorite co-op roguelikes. And a huge thank you to Paradox for sponsoring the video. For starters, I knew this challenge was going to be incredibly difficult, since I quite literally have only played two runs of this game. So I had to recruit some help from my good friends Andrew and Josh. Josh had 30 hours of gameplay, so he he would act as our carry, and Andrew never played this game before either, so we put him on meat shield duty. Our run starts off and we have to choose our adventurers. Andrew chooses Magnus, a furry wolfman who shields everyone consistently and is a mega tank, making him perfect for our front line. I choose Andrin, a higher damage dealing character who can poison, stealth, and bleed opponents with the right cards, and Josh chooses Reginald and Sylvie. He gets to control two characters because he's not ass at the game. Our journey journey starts off the way most journeys do, killing demonic sheep in an open field. There's a ton of mechanics in this game, but I'm going to explain the ones that matter for our quest and the others as we go. Every character has a set deck that you build as you play. You take turns based on speed and lose energy when you use cards. Whenever you win a battle in this game, you're able to select a new card to add into your deck, or you could just get blue shards, which I may explain later. Got it? Good. I opt to get a shiv because zero cost cards are always great. Then we walk by a cursed grave that our priest tries to exercise, but I guess he didn't pay attention in Sunday school because he instantly fails and we get attacked by, you guessed it, more sheep. With more cards to choose from, I select a card called Chant of Accuracy, which is pretty important so I want to explain it here. It's basically a buff that increases the damage of your arrows and swords. Sure, it'd be cool to empower my own archer man, but but I quickly realized that Josh was just way stronger than me while using the same types of damage, so in turn, I started using this on Josh whenever I got the chance. This mechanic of building your deck to not only buff your character, but to also synergize with the team and help out your homies is my favorite part of the game. And while we're on this topic, what note do you even have to hit in order to make a sword cut harder? Whatever it is, it must be sharp. We move to the next battle and see our first obelisk corruption. These are basically challenges you can accept in exchange for a better reward. Some of them are very manageable, while others are very clearly a way to speedrun into hell. We give this one a shot and make quick work of some sheep again, only this time there was an evil farmer too. Emphasis on was, cause we flambéed his ass. And then we hit another event where our wolfman tries to scare a group of pigs. And I'm starting to really question if this man is good at anything. After a solid fight with a bunch of pigmen, I remember to turn my camera on and we continue on our warpath to the desert. We reach a brush where werewolves are camping and once again Magnus wants to pipe up and talk about some dog stuff. And even though I already lost faith in our good boy, believe it or not, it actually works. Nice job, Magnus, but you're on thin ice. And it was finally time for our first mini boss. And honestly, I was pretty confident in our abilities. Perhaps too confident. This is Yogger, the first mini boss in our run. Yogger can be a pretty big problem because he can summon wolves to fight for him and can deal some pretty hefty damage. But even though he had 200 health, this happened. I want to play the clip for you before I explain it so that you can get a grasp of how crazy this game is. And then. Boom! Hit him with the aim. Wait. Okay. Hit him with the slice. <laughs> Use my adrenaline. Hit him with the aim. You just got cooked. Dang. This guy is cooked. Nice. Oh my god. Get him, Josh. Milk him. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dose! Trace! Oh my god! Blast him, John! <laughs> Be his ass! Don't let him see it! He's gonna die! Oh, holy shit! <laughs> Go, Andrew! Oh my god! Kill him, Andrew! I got you. Kill him! Please no. give him the one attack! No! Oh, you got it! No! no we got it! He's dead! He's dead. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. This may look like a lot of mumbo jumbo, but let me explain it mechanically. I had a card named Expert Tracker, which allows you to look at the next five cards in your deck and discard what you don't like. So if I use that card for Josh before his turn, he'd basically get two chances at a good hand. Then I use an Adrenaline card, which gives me extra energy for the turn at the expense of energy later, and I blow my entire hand on his face. Then Josh, because of discarding the bad cards earlier thanks to Expert Tracker, gets a full hand of high damage or zero cost cards. He uses a stealth card which empowers his next skill, making his three strike rapid fire deal 63 damage. Then he used the rest of the cards in his hand and gets Yogger down to 11 health. Finally, Andrew came in and finished him off with a rend and quick slash. We killed Yogger before he even got a turn, meaning this mini boss didn't even get to summon before meeting his early grave. After killing Yogger, we lose his camp and body and everyone gets to choose one item. I opted to get his cleaver because now every single attack I do will apply one bleed. Then we hit the main boss of this section, a tree named Yomer, which is kinda ass for my build because trees don't bleed. Yomer can also summon stuff to fight for him and even though he's a plant, he is ironically quite meaty. So we have to kick our brains in the maximum overdrive. We quickly disperse of the summons and using the expert tracker Josh buff combo we mow this bastard down and turn Yulmer into a Caesar salad. And with the tutorial zone completed, it was finally time for us to go to that faded desert. We hit the town which allows you to use your gold and shards to do just about anything. You can remove cards, you can upgrade cards, you can buy equipment, roll more cards, and the list goes on. But one of my favorite features is that you can just give each other gold and shards as well. Instead of explaining every single fight in the desert, now that we're up to speed, I'm only going to talk about the ones that matter. That way I could leave some content for you to discover if you ever want to try the game yourself. We tried to do the Josh buff combo, which we'll title the Joshenheimer now, but unfortunately these monsters are far too tanky. We do manage to take out the front line, which feels like a win, but every single one of these bastards deals an insane amount of damage. To make matters a little bit worse, most of them applied Sanctify, which is a debuff that makes enemies heal when they hit you. So even though we knock the second character down to 36 health, he deals an AoE double strike which makes him heal off of all of us twice. We spend our next turn trying to burst him down before he can full heal again, and though we're successful at first, it wasn't enough to save our poor backline carry, giving us our first death of the run. I hope she doesn't heal him. Oh! Oh, man. He's no way. Yo! Fortunately, in this game, dying doesn't mean that your character is gone. They just get a really bad card in their deck that severely nerfs them when it's drawn. We continue our treacherous walk, having our anuses recently torn asunder, and run into yet another pack of enemies we don't understand. We attempt to front load our damage to rid ourselves of one sandworm, because I honestly don't trust that guy, but unfortunately, these assholes can go invisible. So unless we had AoE, or a way to detect them, we had to wait until they attacked again. At this point, we were getting sloppy, and because of it, I suffered my first death as well. We have now used two of our three chances, and we haven't even gotten to the boss. I could feel my street cred slipping away, that desert man laughing. It ached in my bones, but we weren't gonna give up. And with all the luck in the world, we get to the final boss of the desert. Before a boss fight, you can roll for a chance to heal 40% of your health if you're lucky. We had a 50% chance, and honestly, we absolutely needed this health since two of our high damage carries were at death's door. Again, mind you. So we roll, and through the grace of God, we heal. And just listen to the energy this game brings out of us. It's so hype. Please, we gotta hit this one. Oh! 
Oh, let's go! Yes! yes. Oh, Holy we barely shit! Got it. Now, all that stood in the way of me and historic glory was a single Lich King. Yeah, a single Lich and the entire goddamn village of the dead, I guess. I used my chant of accuracy on myself in order to increase my sword damage. My card Deflect allows me to draw while giving me armor, so it's 100% a win-win. Unless you draw Death's Door, aka the card you get when you die that severely nerfs the shit out of you. Now, I want to take a quick second here and say that I didn't play this game as a deck builder. I basically got a card whenever it was offered to me which everyone knows is a stupid thing to do in deck builders because it makes your deck unpredictable. I started this fight with 32 cards. So the odds of me pulling death's door on my first hand is about 21.8%. What an awesome start, huh? And when I say it nerfs you, I mean it nerfs you. You get 50% reduced damage and healing for a turn. But I was full health, so I used my entire hand and went on my way. We blew our entire combo on the front party of this party, I guess. And Furry Wolfman shields us as best as he can. Our priest, being the slow lowest character of the bunch makes his turn count, able to deal some nice damage while healing us as well. The second turn I spend doing what I do best, and poisoning every enemy in sight, all 50 of them, and at the end of my combo we knock the groupies down a size. Josh deals as much damage as he can to the Lich King, then our furry friend shouts to make him vulnerable and uses his favorite move. This character stacks shields, that's basically his entire job, but he does have a hilarious attack called shield charge, which makes him deal damage based on his shield. I know that the strongest offense is often a good defense, but this was like shooting a suit of armor out of a goddamn cannon. So he makes quick work of the last posse. Our priest gives us a bit of healing so we're not too close to death, and then the Lich King does this, whatever the hell that was. We were excited to finally get a shot at the Lich himself, but this asshole was about to immediately summon another frontline. So we had had one shot to burst him down. Not only that, but he was stacking darkness on us every chance he got. And once you get hit by 25 dark stacks, you literally explode. So this was possibly our last chance to get him before he could one-shot our carries. I used Wild Hunt, which would increase our damage based on how many cards I played this turn. Instead of using my 3-cost Blade Fury, I used 3-1-cost to increase our damage. I also used Chant of Accuracy to buff Josh so that we can deal even more damage on Josh's turn. I throw everything I have and pass it over to the carry. The Lich now has 308 health. Josh draws a full hand of zero cost cards, which allow him to Oppenheimer the Lich for a ton of damage because the Lich was vulnerable and marked. The Lich has 119 health. Wolfman unfortunately only draws a single attack card, so he shields us as best as he can, attacks once, and ends his turn. The Lich was now at 97 health. It was time for our priest to either deal 97 damage to the Lich King or fail and let the enemy summon more enemy types and explode both of our carries. The second card he draws is a completely useless card from an event we failed, so our priest now had three chances at getting 97 damage worth of cards, and he received one heal and two holy attacks one of which cost three energy, everything he had left. So he was only able to play a single attack card this turn, and that attack would be less than 97 health. But since Josh actually plays this game and leveled up his priest beforehand, he had a passive which gives him one free holy attack every time he uses a holy attack. And with that one free holy attack, our priest is able to kill the Lich King before he kills one of us. Just talking about this fight hypes me up. Oh shit! <laughs> Let's oh go. shit, dude! Let's no go. way! <laughs> no way, dude! That's sick! Wow. Let's go! Oh. That's awesome, dude. That's insane. What the fuck? And unfortunately, unless I sat here for an hour and talked about it, I wouldn't be able to explain to you the intricacies that went into this journey. Notice how I only talked about my deck. 
There were three other characters thinking, crafting, and building their own through this journey as well. And being able to pull off spectacular moments like this are what really sell the experience to me. I wholeheartedly believe that this is one of the best co-op experiences I've played in the last few years. And Josh, Andrew, and I are going to make it a point to play this game and actually unlock the rest of the characters because there's a ton. Editing this video is actually difficult because I want to go and play the game with my friends and that's what I'm gonna do once I'm done. So massive thank you to Across the Obelisk and Paradox for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description and try this game out. I hope you enjoyed this video because I had a ton of fun making it. Now, I'm gonna go play across the obelisk. And here's my stream link. I'll be grinding it out live sometimes, so follow me there. Love ya, goodbye.